it broke the law years ago. Does that shock you? It really shouldn't. As someone that eats, breathes, and lives soil science in her spare time and just regular life, here are three, three additives you should never, ever add to your soil. Okay, that sounded a little bit intense, but it's, it's serious. These are recommended at times by people who I'm very confident have never tried it because they try it once and realize, oh shit. I apologize for the wind. I'm going to Calgary this week and uh, yeah, it's windy AF. Number one is probably the least likely, but I do know if you stumble upon it as a recommendation, the desire to do it is probably pretty high. And that is the addition of micronutrients. Now I had mentioned this before and I am going to do it closer to Christmas. It, I call it the 17 days of essential nutrients. So I essentially go through all of the 17 essential nutrients for plants. I explain what the nutrients do, how to detect a deficiency and what you can do to remedy it uh, based on that. And in some cases for some of those 17, I will say do nothing. And the reason for that is because micronutrients is incredibly toxic if it is over applied. And because it's a micro, it has zero relation to the size of the molecule and entirely related to actually how much physically we find inside of the plant is incredibly low. You can get micronutrient fertilizers that is a conglomerate of literally micronutrients, or you can very specifically add, say, boron by using thorax, actually. So these are ways you can add the independence. Now, if you've ever seen fertilizer burn, one of the reasons we get fertilizer burn is actually due to excessive levels of nutrients. And these are usually, when it's excessive, is micro. Now, there are conditions that will make it worse if you have added it, or if you notice some toxicity, but you kind of sworn that you haven't added any fertilizer, you may just have an excessive amount of micronutrients naturally in your soil, which is possible, particularly people who don't know the history of their soil. Sandy soils can make this worse. Dry soils can make this worse. Soils with low levels of organic material can make this worse and actually even the placement and proximity to the roots. So if you're experiencing toxicity and or you've added micronutrients and the soil's never been able to really truly recover, you want to consider adding in charcoal or compost or peat or leaf mold if you watch the video into your soil and this will actually act as a magnet and kind of pull that micronutrients out make it less bioavailable to the plant so number one hands down is micronutrient whether it's in a mixed formula or in a single element just skip it i promise you you will regret it okay speaking of actually one of the three ways in which your soil be can become undesirable and actually cause burn to your plants. So we know that abundance of elements, toxic levels of elements is number one. Number two is actually ammonia, specifically ammonia, that element specifically, and salts. And the place where you can find this is actually manure. Okay, so I use manure all the time, but the key to what manure I do use is that A, it's fully composted. So this means that generally the salts are lower. The reason why fully composted manure has less salt actually comes down to the fact that as the composting process is taking place, we have a lot of weathering happening, particularly water and water and salt is like a little homogeny of love because love between anything is important and salt and water actually just wash salt out of the system entirely so when you compost manure just the general age and its exposure to the elements is actually what causes those salts to leach out now is it completely salt free no but it's a heck of a lot less and therefore you end up with less burn that means if you're going to use manure, number one is that you want to make sure it's composted. How you know it's composted is when you go to smell it. If it smells like manure, it's not composted. Okay. Number two about manure is actually very specifically chicken or broiler manure. Now, if you did not know, broiler manure or chicken poo is incredibly high in ureic acid. 
it's like something like 80 percent actually let me check that yeah it's 80 percent so it's 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 upwards of 80 percent uh uric acid and this can at times be incredibly detrimental to your your plants so when it comes to chicken manure you really want to make sure it's composted and or what my favorite is to dilute it so it broke the law years ago does that shock you? It really should. So if we're being totally honest, but I broke the law years ago. Saskatoon, you're not allowed to have shapes. So in my classic left-handed, red-haired moment, I thought, screw you, city of Saskatoon. I'm going to have some chickens. And so I made a chicken coop in my shed, and um, it didn't work out. Let's just say that. Animal control said absolutely the F not. So said chickens were removed so i did deal with chicken manure for a small period of time i mean i did hoodwink them for about six months there and they were cute i had little bantams anyways so i did have manure and what i did is i did just toss the manure and the bedding into the compost because that dilution um just because of the sheer volume of gardening that i do do was perfect and i didn't end up with any of that toxicity or those effects so if you're dealing with chickens consider this it may not happen the first time you apply it but as it builds up in your soil system particularly if you're doing no dig it can get just worse and worse when it comes to the application of chicken manure so that one nada diluted not nada but diluted and i'm going to do a video just on this concept separately because i do feel like it's going to overwhelm some of you but don't let it because i am like i said gonna do a video on it separately and that is anything any amendment that you choose to place in your soil that has not got undergone a bioassays test. And this bioassays test needs to be done by you and yourself and I. Don't rely on third party. Promise me you won't rely on third party. Be your own garden scientist, like I always say. And this is incredibly easy to perform. Essentially, what you're doing is you're trying to test monocots and die cots in a system of that soil amendment under conditions where you can control the number and the number that ultimately germinates. If your germination rate is less than what is stated on the package, and this is kind of why there's a little bit of thought that has to go into the testing process, but if it's less than, you know, 90%, if that's what the package says, then you know that there's a very real potential that the additive you're about to place in your garden is going to cause issues. The reason why I say this is so important is because if you're about to use a compost and it's not fully cured, you're going to find out real quick if it's not fully cured by doing a bioassays test. If you're going to add a chicken more manure that is high in uric acid that you hasn't been fully composted or any manure for that matter, you're going to find out pretty darn quick. If you have a compost or a manure or anything that's, or even a topsoil or a, a triple blend mix or a soil you bought from a supplier somewhere or intend to purchase topsoil, bag soil, bulk soil from a dump truck, you know, wherever dig soil out of the ground and put it in to fill your beds regardless of where you get the soil if you don't do bioassays tests you may have allelopathic properties in that soil which actually suppresses the germination of your seeds and their overall health if you have a literally the list is endless the list i could literally go on for ages because i've seen happen to so many of you in the geek crew along with folks even on an industrial level that have been exposed to properties that are dangerous and sometimes it's not curable and or it takes a lot of time to cure. Probably the most common issue I find is that some people get uh, persistent herbicides in their compost or in their bag soils and there was goodness me there was a youtuber I'll put her channel here they had purchased some compost that actually had high levels of herbicide in it. You could see from the plant growth that it's very obviously herbicide. Now, I did a whole video on how that soil can recover and what she can do. And she's a professional, so I'm sure she figured it out on her own without me butting in. Really, my opinion doesn't matter. But ultimately speaking, if she would have done a bioassays test, she would have known not to fill the entire greenhouse up with that. You live, you learn. I've done it before, actually, with city compost before. Um, I've had an entire, an entire bed. No, it's two beds. 
two entire beds that just didn't turn out at all because of the fact that I did use compost that hadn't been tested properly. But with that being said, this time of year is a great time of year to get started on a lot of fall projects, whether it's building the soil up or just other doodads. So if you want to know some fall projects, check out these ones here. And they're science-based. Trust me, you haven't heard of most of them. And that video right there is what Google says to watch. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Live action shot of my compost, bitch. Don't tell him I said that. He doesn't watch the channel anyway, so he's never going to know.